Hello and welcome to the Cornish Radio Amateur Club series of instructional videos for the UK Radio Amateur Examinations. I'm Rick Hall, G4PGD, and today we're going to tackle syllabus item 2A2, which we've called the simple circuit. Starting at foundation license level, firstly a quick comment on interpreting schematic circuits. If you connect electronic components together with wire, in the real world, the wire itself will often affect the circuit. It has resistance, inductance and capacitance. Indeed, due to its uh, leads and physical construction, a resistor may exhibit quite different effects at DC and VHF. These effects need to be taken into account when designing and laying out circuits. However, when you look at a schematic diagram in a theoretical environment, like studying for uh, these exams, you should consider the lines connecting the components as completely neutral and the components as being pure. So in the graphic, uh, we consider that the cell has a constant voltage, the wires are lossless and the resistor R exhibits just pure resistance. If, for example, we need to identify that a cell has internal or source resistance, the resistance is indicated separately, as shown on screen. And by the way, we will cover source resistance at intermediate level in video 2C3. So you should appreciate that when interpreting a schematic diagram, the lines, wires, have no intrinsic properties of their own. They simply show network elements joined together. Both ends of the line are at equal potential. Now that we understand that electrons move from atom to atom, we can imagine this as a bit like a game of pass the parcel. The flow of electrons works as long as there is a circuit. During our studies, we will encounter and examine the simple circuit quite a lot. The graphic shows a simple circuit with a single cell, a toggle switch and a lamp. As the switch is open, no current will flow. Now we see a simple circuit with a switch closed and current flowing of I amps. Notice that the arrow is indicating conventional current flow. That is from positive to negative. The lamp opposes the flow of electrons, like the cartoon character Mr. Resistance in video 2A1. It exhibits resistance or opposition to current flow by converting electrical energy into light and heat energy. Let's look at the water analogy. Water is often used to aid visualisation of electrical current and voltage. The picture shows a pump drawing water from a reservoir and pushing it around a pipe with a constriction. In this analogy, the pump is the source of EMF, electromotive force. The reservoir is electrical earth and the pinch point in the pipe is a resistor. The high pressure at the top of the pump is analogous to a high potential on one terminal of the cell. This helps us to visualise why, with two resistances in parallel, the parallel combination of the two lamps in the, gra in the graphic has less resistance than either a resistor alone. Using the water analogy, the water now has two pipes to flow down, and so this is uh, like an equivalent pipe, if you like, of twice the cross-sectional area of one pipe alone. The opposition to the water flow is half, or the resistance is halved. The water analogy is initially useful, but as electrical current and water flow are essentially two different physical processes, the analogy is bound to break down at some point and should only be used to gain initial perspective. It's okay at foundation level because it copes with resistance and current fairly well. But at intermediate and full 
uh, license level, uh, you will need to leave it behind as it particularly fails to represent the magnetic or electric fields that are generated as a result of charges moving, which is something we will uh, study later in this video series. The current in all parts of a series circuit, when the components are lined up end to end, is the same. The PD across components that are parallel is the same. Kirchhoff's laws. Although not mentioned by name in the syllabus, Kirchhoff's voltage law and Kirchhoff's current law are both alluded to and it's worth understanding them. Their application will often provide a quicker solution to an otherwise lengthy calculation using Ohm's law. Kirchhoff's current law tells us that the total current or charge entering a junction or node is exactly equal to the charge leaving that node, as it has no other place to go. Using a water analogy, the volume of water entering a full-up water tank equals the water leaving it. The graphic shows a node with two input currents, I2 and I3, and one exit current, I1. As one might expect, the magnitude of the exit current is equal to the sum of the input currents, but with respect to the node, water tank, the direction is opposite. It's leaving the node, so the sign of I1 is negative. At full license level, we might like to write this formally as minus I1 equals I2 plus I3, or rearranging I1 plus I2 plus I3 equals zero. But for now, it's enough to remember that what goes in must come out. Let's do a question. What is the current I3 in the circuit shown? Well, we know that the current from the battery I1 is 6 amps and I2 is 3 amps. So the difference must be I3 equals 3 amps. So, restating, where a supply feeds more than one component or device, the total current is the sum of the currents in the individual items. For syllabus item 2C1, we will learn to use Ohm's law to determine the current through a resistor given the voltage across it. Indeed, for the previous question, although we could have used Ohm's law to calculate I3 just as easily, there are situations where Kirchhoff's current law can save several computational steps. Here's a study tip for you. Look to see if a circuit problem can be easily solved using Kirchhoff's current law before diving into Ohm's law calculations. Kirchhoff's voltage law states that in any closed loop network, the total voltage around the loop is equal to the sum of all of the voltage drops within the same loop. In a way, this is similar to Kirchhoff's current law in the sense that nothing goes missing. Let's do a question. In the graphic shown, Vs equals 18 volts and V2 equals 11 volts. What is V1? Vs is the source voltage. Well, V1 equals Vs minus V2, which is 7 volts. So the sum of the voltages across a number of resistors in series equals the supply voltage. Once again, Kirchhoff's voltage law can shorten calculations, particularly when we start to look at potential dividers. In the next video for syllabus item 2B1, we look at some simple power calculations for foundation level and some more complex calculations around series parallel networks at full license level, where Kirchhoff's laws 
will come into play. So that concludes syllabus item 2A2, the simple circuit. Thank you for watching.